let's get right to it. Uh, we a couple weeks removed from the uh, UFC 129, but there's kind of a couple of big things that came from it. Like everybody was expecting to see the announcement of GSP, or at least the build to GSP Anderson Silva, but it looks so much like we're no, going uh, that direction now. I thought beforehand it was leaning that way anyway. Joe St. Pierre said that, you know, in order to go up to 185, he would have to gain weight. But there's kind of like nothing to gain, a lot to lose. Um, my prediction actually was, and I'll hopefully we'll see it come true, was that if George St. Pierre won, Nick Diaz would be his next fighter. And, and the reason being is not, you know, Nick Diaz is a great fighter. Uh, I probably think if any fighter in Strike Force deserves a crossover, it's his teammate, Gilbert Mendez. However, GSP is pretty much coming up in the weight division. There's not any compelling fights. People are upset because of the styling fights. And lo and behold, you got Nick Diaz, who's on a 10 fight win streak has talked about going into boxing because he's upset with you know, the fights he's been getting and the money and everything. And he's a teammate of Jake Shields. And now he, you know, his teammate lost, and there's Nick Diaz on a 10 fight win streak. And so a lot of people would say, wait a minute, George, why are you going up to 185 pounds? You haven't cleared out the welterweight division. It's a true statement. And now that Zufa is on strike force as well, it's a fight that they can make happen. It's a fight I think should happen. Nick Diaz has fought in the UFC before. He's been fighting, you know, he's like 28 years old. It's, it seems like he's been fighting forever. Uh, I think it's a very compelling matchup, and I think that's a fight we're going to see. And uh, one more thing, I think that's also was made recently, but a little bit ago, in Toronto, it looks like she's going to finally be returning back to the. Yeah, June, June 18th, the interesting thing is. Uh, I don't know if it's as big of an announcement as it was, you know, like before, like Harry G. and Toronto. The women fighters have established themselves somewhat. She's fighting on a card that she does not have to carry. That's the Strike Force Grand Prix. We got Al Alistair Overeem against Fabrizio Verdun. We got Josh Barnett versus Brett Rogers. So you've already got some great fights on there. And then Gina Carano stepping on there. It's going to add something to it. But we've seen a 115 pound women's tournament in Bellator. Uh, we've seen Christine Cyborg Santos. Uh, you know, we've seen uh, Mario Spoonin come back in the last uh, event, or not two events ago pulled out a, a victory, so I think the women's fighters are more established. Obviously, you have a name like Gina uh, in there, will help the women and, you know, possibly, you know, make Dana White say, yeah, we're going to keep the women around in some form. Do they stay in a strike force? Do they keep strike force? The strike force become a women's organization just for the women only. Uh, it'll be very interesting to see. But one thing will be hard to gauge will be hard to gauge the numbers because there's already been a lot of hype for this for this heavyweight Grand Prix. So our I believe people are going to be watching it for the Grand Prix. And oh, by the way, Gina Carano is fighting not like, oh, we have to go see Gina Carano. And oh, by the way, there's a heavyweight Grand Prix. People will wait for this Grand Prix for a while. All right, uh, that's going to do it uh, for uh, part one. Yeah, I'll come back. Join us next week as uh, we break down UFC 130 because we're one day away from it. And a little bit, we'll talk about some of the injuries that have been happening to the UFC that have kind of changed a lot of the summer cards, especially with uh, UFC 130. All right.